I'd be happy to take questions. Any questions? Hi, I have a question here. Uh, at least I was sent this from uh, Dr. Holmquist on uh, Speak Loud from the Analytics. You have to speak loud. Yeah, why don't yeah, you come okay. up here? I can set it. Uh, why is it in your view that IPCC has sort of blurred or misquoted or actually ignored the solar uh, theory in your view? Yeah. Is it that it doesn't fit the models or is it that they the IPCC has uh, published its science reports based on the work of uh, some, some credible scientists, actually about 152 according to the British Met Office, but the conclusions in their summary report are, co are controlled by a handful of government scientists who have selectively or have used data selectively, or ignored any dissenting information in order to present the view that climate change is entirely human-caused. In fact, they claim to be 99% sure. That's what they say, <laughs> which is a joke. Because we have found, using the same kind of data, in the same journals, the same scientific information, we have found that the case for human-caused climate change does not exist and that the evidence points to natural causes as the real reason, and that therefore there is no point to trying to control greenhouse gases. It will not make a bit of difference to the climate. Yeah. I, uh, I read the other day in the newspaper that uh, I think it was the IPCC claimed that it there's actually, there's actually been a warming trend over the last decade. The temperatures had actually been, been warming. Yeah. How are they looking differently at the data to reach that result? Okay, this is a very good point. I'm glad you raised that. I wrote about this yesterday as an editor in an uh, op-ed editorial, and I'll try to explain this to you. There's no question, as you've seen from the data, that the climate has cooled in the last 10 years. Anyone who, anyone who looks at the data would come to that conclusion. Then how is it possible that the World Meteorological Organization has issued a press release, which is what you're referring to, claiming that the last 10 years are among the warmest in the last 160 years of record-taking? Does anybody know the answer? Well, I'll tell you. What they've done successfully is to confuse the issue. They are not confused themselves, but they've confused the public. They've misled the public. And how have they done this? Okay, they have taken two different concepts and mixed them up. Let me show you. One concept is the level of warmth, that is temperature. That's measured in degrees Celsius, okay? Temperature. The other one is Temperature trend, that's a different story. Temperature trend is measured in degrees Celsius per year, per year. So you can have a high level of temperature, but you can also have the temperature going down, cooling. That's what's happening. Then you might ask, well, why is the temperature high in this decade? And the answer very simply is because the climate is recovering from the Little Ice Age a natural recovery. It will keep on recovering from the Little Ice Age, probably to the same level of temperature it had in the Middle Ages, which is about two degrees warmer than it is today. So I would guess, I'm not making a prediction, but I would guess that within the next centuries it might warm by another degree or two, which would be a natural warming not due to carbon dioxide, not due to carbon dioxide. In between, the, the temperatures may cool for a while and warm for a while and cool for a while, but the general trend will be upward because of its natural recovery from the Little Ice Age. One more question in the back. Uh, just a quick word about carbon dioxide. 
from a geological perspective, carbon dioxide is probably at the lowest level it has been in the last 500 million years. In the past, carbon dioxide was up to 20 times higher than what it is today. 20 times. All the plants we have that we depend on, like wheat, corn, that's maize, that's sorghum, all the important grain plants, rice, developed at a time when carbon dioxide levels were four or five times greater than today. These plants want more carbon dioxide. They're starved for carbon dioxide. They need more carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is good for agriculture. It makes plants grow faster and better. We need it. We should all thank the Chinese for putting more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. That is my conclusion. This is not what the people in, at Bella Center will tell you, but that's the real fact. Ask any agricultural expert and he will tell you that carbon dioxide is the natural fertilizer for plants. That's what they live on. That's what they need. If carbon dioxide levels ever become too low, all plants will die, all animals will die, and we will starve. So life depends on carbon dioxide, which is a non-toxic, transparent gas in the atmosphere. You can't see it. It's in our bodies. We breathe it out. So it's non-toxic. It's good for us. And these people want to do away with carbon dioxide. Well, thank you again for your attention, and I hope you have a wonderful time in Copenhagen.